Hi, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. In this week's quick tip, we are going to talk about the native implementation of After Effects ACES workflow. So, gone are the days where you needed to download an OpenColor.io plugin and have to fiddle around with ACES config files. Now, everything is native into After Effects, and we are going to take a look at that. Because I always want to give something a little bit special to my quick tips, I will dive into the ACES background a little bit more in depth today. So let's get started with chart time. If you're only interested in the After Effects part, then you can jump ahead and go and find the locator for the After Effects tutorial. This part is for the a little bit more knowledge-hungry people among you that are not afraid of looking at charts for maybe four to five minutes. All right, let us jump into the colors real quick here. I could make this very in-depth, but I will keep it a little bit more shallow as we are just establishing what it is when we are talking about ACES workflow. So what are we looking at here is a diagram that's also called a horseshoe and this is because it looks like a horseshoe and what is telling us this thing here well our human eyes are perceptible to different wavelengths and this diagram is an exact representation of what a healthy human being can see with their eyes so all the wavelengths that we can see are inside of the horseshoe here so we have other color spaces of course as the sRGB color space, so this is a very well-known color space, and as you can see, it's rather small. So what does this tell us? The sRGB color space cannot display saturation levels that are perceptible with our eyes. So we basically have less saturation in the colors when we look at a sRGB color space. Why not make it bigger then, you ask? Well, this is rather simple, due to constraints in our display manufacturing and to old standards, we are mostly serving up our pictures and television and so on as Rec. 709 and sRGB still. Now this is changing a little bit lately with the emergence of HDR televisions, but still a lot of things are going on in sRGB, so this is the smallest common denominator and therefore it's used quite a lot. So let's actually look at the color space of the bigger ACES one, and this is the ACES 2065-1 color space. And basically, this is made so it's not cutting off any of the horseshoe diagram here. So in that color space, we are having colors that we even with our human eyes can't see. But this is necessary to keep every color that we can see inside of the color space, especially now, for example, in that cyan greenish part. If we moved our points closer to the original shape, there will be parts cut off, and we don't want that. There is another ACES color space in between, and this is the ACES CG space. This is a bit of dangerous half-knowledge here, so I guess the CG space is a little bit smaller, because A, we are not having technologies to display the bigger space here, and cinema projectors have a color space that is actually a little bit smaller than ACES CG. And on the other hand, ACES is very smart with transitions from one color space to the other, and it tries to keep all the data intact. So if you actually use the ACES 2065 color space and converted it to ACES CG and then back to the ACES 2065 color space, all the data and all the colors should be still in place there without any losses. So you're probably now ending up asking the question, yeah, it's all cool, but why? Why are we doing that? Why is there many color spaces that we convert our colors to? Why jump through all these hoops? Well, you can see color spaces as sort of canvases. And the bigger the canvas, the more you have freedom to mix your colors, and the more likely it is the correct color will come out. If you are very limited by a small color space as sRGB, 
you cannot even go outside of that color space. So all colors that would exist outside of it and have the possibility to mix does not exist inside of a workflow that only consists of an sRGB color space. So if you have a broader canvas and do your math on a broader canvas and then shrink down the canvas again, your math has already been done and the results are more precise than if you would have started with a smaller canvas to begin with. What ACES is also doing by shrinking down the color space in the end to, for example, sRGB to make it compatible with the screens of our daily use, it also tone maps the output. And this is what most people are after when they look at ACES. So we don't have blown out highlights and we have colors that very much behave like maybe film or even our human eyes. And this is essentially what makes ACES so gorgeous to look at, because it reflects how we look at the world with our own eyes. Last but not least, here is an overview over the ACES workflow and what to do and what not. So with our standards today, most of our files come in as sRGB mostly or Rec 709. So we need an input device transform. That means our colors will be taken care of and put on the right place in the bigger color space. As we are working in our bigger color space now, we can do all the math, speaking rendering stuff, putting light information in and so on. So if you just want to give out files without doing anything after that, you can put them through a device output transform. That means we are getting that here. So the color space will be shrunken down to our sRGB space and we get applied tone mapping. And then we can look at the colors on our screen without getting blown out highlights or false colors. Now, if you want to carry on to compositing, you need to get the data of ACES out without converting the color space into files that can be read into the compositor. So we don't lose data here and can carry on right away and do basically the same thing as in the 3D software, crunching numbers in the bigger color space. So whenever you want to do compositing, color grading or anything else, so for example, conforming to HDR displays later, it is very essential that you don't cut off information and transform your color space to sRGB, but let the color space stay in the native ACES workflow here and carry over to your compositing or grading package. Then from there, it is basically your choice whether you want to get out images that are viewable with normal screens or, for example, if you have facilities that do special grading for HDR and you're not doing it yourself, you would give out ACES files again and send them to them so they can deal with the same colors you did and don't have cut off color spaces here as we would have here in the output of the sRGB images. All right, hopefully this was somewhat understandable. Shout out to I Go By Sachs channel. He is having very good tutorials also on the same topic as I did with ACES and After Effects. He is coming from Redshift, I'm coming from Octane. But if you have problems understanding my way of explaining, maybe he does a better job with his videos. So I recommend you to head over there and check out his videos. But of course, feel welcome to stay here and go with me through the After Effects part now. Before we jump into After Effects, let's real quick go over the ACES settings inside of Octane in Cinema 4D. I've done that in other videos also, but since I want you to watch one video and not jump off, let's do this real quick here also. You're, by the way, looking at a smaller scene I did lately with my tubes that I will post an animation for, so keep your eyes out for that in the future. So first of all, let's go and set up the ACES transform for our viewport. So we are looking at the tone mapped ACES for sRGB in here. This is very simple. Just go to the camera imager 
and click ACES Tone Mapping. If you want to do that on a camera by camera basis, you can also do that by going to the camera, to the camera imager, turn that on, and in the camera imager, click the same button here. As this makes the image a little bit darker, I have the workflow of increasing the exposure by 1.5, as you can see here. As we've done that, we can light our scene now looking through the ACES tone mapping, which is kind of a good way to see what your colors and light is looking when working with ACES. All right, let's set up the render settings real quick here. Go to the render settings, go to the Octane Renderer. In the Render AOV group here, you need to enable the Render AOVs, Save Beauty. I don't like multi layers here, you can do that if you want. What I also always do is set this to DWAB compression to have a rather small file size that mostly is even smaller than 8 bit PNG files. But you are containing most all of your data in there and can transport it over to your comp. Set up an output path here so you can save your files somewhere too. And last but not least, in this tab, you can click on here to add render AOVs. I have another video that goes over that. Then back in the main tab, really important, set your buffer type or color space more likely to ACES CG. You can also use the bigger color space. I go with the standard for CG work, which is in the name CG in the ACES file here. And this is basically it. Don't be alarmed if your picture viewer is showing a slightly different color and different contrast in your image. This is because Cinema 4D's picture viewer doesn't know ACES and shows you the sRGB image of the ACES color space. And this looks weird and a little bit off. And finally, we are here inside of After Effects and can talk about what we set out to talk about the new workflow in After Effects. So this is version 23.2.0, build 65. And if we go to our color settings here, just click this button here, you can instantly see that there is some changes to the UI and there is a color engine. So usually you are greeted with this one here and you can set it to open color IO here. You have a warning that you have to click away that projects will look different and so on. Inside of the open color IO configuration here, you have different methods, including the one that you already know from older projects, where you need to link your OpenColor.io config file. But we are not going to do that, since we are talking about the native capability of After Effects of doing OpenColor.io, or ACES, and go with the ACES 1.2 here for now. As soon as we've done that, After Effects is setting up the projects for us, so everything looks fine. The compositing space is ACES CG and our display color space is ACES sRGB. And this is the color transform back from the big ACES color space to our sRGB display space. If you want, you can go with the ACES Rec 709 color space. I do that quite often because it's a little bit less contrasty, but we will see that later. Click OK here and actually bring in our file and make a new comp by dragging our file here. Now, if you remember that Cinema 4D Live Viewer, this image looks a little bit different right now than back in the Live Viewer. And this is because for whatever reason, After Effects is interpreting the footage in the wrong way. So what we need to do is go to Interpret Footage Main and then go to color. And here you can see the footage is interpreted as ACES 2065-1, but we want it to come in as we've set it in our 3D file. And this is ACES CG. So if we do that, you can see there was a change here, maybe a little bit of a subtler one, but you can see the colors are now way less saturated. And this is exactly what we saw in our Octane Live Viewer. Now, if you have a change of heart and want to view your ACES space through a Rec. 709 filter, 
you can go down here and choose, for example, Rec 709. And as I've said, this way the image is less contrasty, so I have more wiggle room when I do my color correction. And this is why I like Rec 709 a little bit more than the Asus sRGB, which has a quite strong contrast usually. Now, this isn't a color correction tutorial. This should only show you the way to work with Asus inside of After Effects. But you can let me know in the comments whether you want a complete overview over how I would do a comp like this in After Effects. So with all the effects, glows and chromatic aberration and so on on top. So you get sort of a silver wing grade out of it. For the sake of showing something, let's go and add some curves. So what I want to do is go to new and make a new adjustment layer here. Here we go. This isn't really necessary if you only have one layer, but in usual comps you have multiple layers and want to color correct them all at once. Then I have Andrew Kramer's effects console, so I tap control and space and type in curves. Enter. So I have my curse effect now in the adjustment layer here. And then I can make adjustments and make this render look nice and tasty. Something like this. As I've said, I would do a lot more to this to make it polished and final. But since this is not a tutorial about this, we will leave it at that. And now we want to get this image out of the comp. Since this is not an animation, but a still image, we go to compositing, save frame as, file. Here we go, we can save it and give it a name. Let's save time and just cut off that part here and hit enter. Now there's another really important step that was not there before, at least with the old workflow. So you have to go to the output file here, go to color once more, and then choose your working space for the output. Now there's quite a lot of spaces here available, but if you want to get what you see right now on the screen, you should choose the exact same color space that you are looking through right now. So right now you're looking through the Asus sRGB, so we go out to the output sRGB here. If you don't do that, you will stay in whatever ASUS working space you are and you don't get the tone map version out of here. So let's go with ASUS sRGB, hit OK and then go render. A small extra here. So if you go to the color settings again, and you want to choose a newer ASUS version, for example, the ASUS CG 1.3 version here, the naming is a little bit different. So you don't get the output sRGB. This now is named sRGB Display ASUS 1.0 SDR Video. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but here we are. There's one advantage here, and this is when you bring in footage, the footage is interpreted correctly. So the footage shouldn't have to be set here. So it comes in as ASUS CG from the beginning. But there is a difference in the output. So if I want to put out my comp again and then go to color here and want to choose the sRGB, you only can find utility sRGB. And this is not the right color space you want to go with output sRGB. So in order to see that, you have to go show all. And if you do that, let me just pull that up here slightly. Then you can see beside the utility here, there's also the sRGB. For example, that one display ASUS 1.0 to SDR video. And this is the space that wasn't there before and that you need to choose to get your tone mapped results out. All right, and if you have done that and open your image app in the Windows Image Viewer, for example, you can see that although Windows is probably not understanding ACES, because we have tone mapped it down to sRGB, you're seeing exactly the same result 
as we've done with the ACES workflow inside of After Effects and the ACES workflow inside of Octane in Cinema 4D. All right, that was it. A little bit longer one this time again. If you stayed till the end, I thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you can take some knowledge with you here. Again, if you're interested in any in-depth coaching sessions, just write me a mail, contact me. I will be very happy to provide you with further information. Other than that, if you have any ideas for future tutorials, let me know in the comments below. And that leaves me with my famous last words. Thank you very much and happy color space transforming. Bye.